Welcome to the Stranger Than Fiction podcast. Once again, I'm your host, Patrick Meekin. I'm the author of the True Spiritual Warfare books, Nightmare in Holmes County and 225th Street, which tell terrifying true stories of uh, spiritual warfare, paranormal activity, and deliverance um, in real-life haunted houses. Both books are available at Amazon.com. And I want to thank you for tuning in tonight. And I would like to encourage you to subscribe uh, to the podcast and, and share it with others. Uh, we try to, uh, you know, keep relevant uh, topics at, at the forefront here, you know, and deliverance ministry is one of them. You know, we, we talk about some controversial subjects that aren't, uh, aren't really addressed a whole lot in the church nowadays, but are very relevant, especially in the day and age in which we live. And tonight we have a very special guest, um, he's an evangelist. He's an exorcist. His name is Vincent Bauhaus. Um, you're in the United Kingdom, Vincent. Is that correct? Yes. Hi there. I'm I'm here in London, United Kingdom. Yes. And now, where I first saw Vincent before, there was a, you know, um, I, I believe it or not, a sci-fi program. And I would like to encourage anyone who's watching, if you can find this on any of the streaming services you know, Roku, whatever, any of those channels, it has been available, but it was a series on sci-fi uh, called The Real Exorcist with Bob Larson. And it showed real life uh, footage of real life exorcism. And one of the first episodes may have been the first episode. They went to the United Kingdom and I saw Vincent um, helping uh, with uh, uh, Bob Larson uh, casting demons out of people. And it always stuck in my mind. I was like, I'm not sure who that guy is, but he seems like he knows what he's doing, you know? So that's that's encouraging, you know? And um, later, and I couldn't remember at first where in the world I saw him, but I, I later saw him on an episode of, uh, I, I believe it's from Shudder. It's called uh, Cursed Films. And it's a, a program that talks about some of the horror movies that actually are cursed or believed to be cursed. And, and uh, Vincent was on that program as well. And Vincent, you were doing some, some deliverance work right on the, on the program. Am I correct in that? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I actually, um, it was um, Reverend Bob Larson who introduced me a long time ago. And when I first got saved, I saw a clip on him on TV mm -hmm. on some kind of, uh, geography or national anyway one of the channels you normally don't expect it mm -hmm. and um soon after that i went to go and meet him and and then we've whenever he's in europe we uh, you know i'm i'm there to help but it uh, that got me into it uh, apart from evangelism and going doing grassroots evangelism in in africa and india really the power of deliverance and yeah. then um i did a couple of documentaries and the the most recent one being curse films mm -hmm. uh, where so many supernatural freak accidents had apparently happened and people have actually died during the filming of those horror films and, and uh, that was the exorcist movie correct y yeah and there's a few yeah. others that okay uh, the strains and and yeah terrible accidents have happened but yeah I, um um they got me to invite several people that needed uh deliverance exorcism and they came and and yeah it was all filmed and you can all see them being delivered yeah on the on the episode that's awesome and just for the uh for the record it's kind of funny here 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 in the united states it is between three and four a.m <laughs> which is the so-called bewitching hour, you know, the devil's hour, whatever. And we don't care about that. We're going to, we're going to talk about deliverance. Yeah. You know, we're not going to back down and, and, uh, you know, cower in fear when, you know, some, there are certain times when uh, activity is higher. It's, it's just, it is, you know, different reasons for that. But, um, you know, uh, it, we're going to, uh, this work schedule wise for me at this hour and, and for Vincent in the United Kingdom. So we're going to, uh, we're going to talk deliverance during this time and, and, uh, hopefully, you know, shed some light on what he is doing and, you know, remind everyone the Bible, the Bible is very clear that, um, the casting out of demons is a vital part of the great commission. 
And, and if you look and you look at what the apostles did, you know, when Jesus sent them out, you know, they, they went, he gave them power over unclean spirits to cast them out. And that's what they did. You know, and at one point they came back, I believe at that point, there was like 70 people following Christ and they came back and they said, even the demon, or they said, even the devils, because I, I always read a King James, they said, even the devils are subject to us. And Jesus said, basically, well, I saw Satan cast out of heaven like a bolt of lightning. He said, marvel not that you are rejoice not that uh, the devils are subject to you, but rather that your names are written in heaven. So yeah. the, the joy is really being saved in the first place. And then with that comes the commission of casting out devils. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And um, uh, when Jesus, um, I, I always, when people need help, I refer to Luke 4.18. Which is what Isaiah said in uh, chapter 61 um, that the Lord has come to preach the gospel, but also has been sent to heal the brokenhearted and set at liberty them that are bruised yes. and take deliverance to the captives. And so, people that need deliverance or exorcism um, or normally also need um, a, a healing of their broken heart or their soul yeah. wounds. A lot of them are in that position because they're bruised jesus has yeah. said them that are bruised bruised because of well i think a good 50 percent of people i minister to are bruised out of their childhood yeah and evil spirits have come in uh, mm -hmm. do curses and abuse and and then later on in life they need deliverance yes Yes. And, and you mentioned that you've traveled in, you know, in Africa and India, and I'm sure you, you know, those are not generally what we call Christian nations. You know, there's a lot of Hinduism and it, in Africa, there's, there's lots of different kinds of witchcraft. And uh, so do you, do you find that in those parts of the world, you run into uh, different demons than you do, for instance, um, not overall different, but maybe different as far as, uh, higher levels of certain demons in those parts of the world than you would in the United Kingdom. Oh yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, first, first I, um, remember an episode in, in actually went to, uh, the Islamic Republic of Pakistan and there are several Christians and, um, went to this area and after the open air, uh, crusade, um, one began uh, an individual person, a man manifested. And I, I began to address, and that man, <laughs> he speaks only uh, whatever they speak over there. I forgot Urdi or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. um, but he certainly not spoke English, but the demon was speaking clearly English out of him. Wow. I was like, oof, this is very odd. And every, everybody else was pretty astonished. Yeah. Um, but yeah, indeed, in, in India, you encounter very definitely, very completely different scenarios with with evil spirits. It can be very complex because of yes. generations and generations of of very strange idol worship. Yeah. Um, that can be very intense, very aggressive. But is that? Is they, that where they will do the rituals where, I mean, I know they do the one where they put the coal, they, they dab like uh, coal on your, on your, uh, or ash on your forehead. And I, I believe the person gets possessed when they do that. Uh, it's part of a ritual, but then the people, they actually put um, like hooks through their skin and they can pull something heavy down the road. They don't bleed. It's great. And then they go to like a temple and they do another thing and a person comes out of it and have, have you I, i've heard of that have you ever seen anything like that over there not that particular one but mm -hmm. there are there are some really odd things going on there that get people into so much trouble yes so very difficult to get them out of it you know it's it, you mentioned the, the 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 man who was speaking english even though he didn't know english and um it's funny because, you know, sometimes here in the United States, and I would venture to say probably in England, you run into this too, but uh, 
a Kundalini, which is linked to Hinduism. Yeah. And I, I've seen people that got that. Um, for, I've seen it from if they get certain tattoos. I'm not saying every tattoo brings that, but certain ones and, you know, where they get it, what it is, whatever. Certain practices such as uh, yoga, things like because yoga is from the Hindu religion, you know. But I've actually had an experience where um, th th this young lady, uh, me and her boyfriend, were trying to cast demons out of her. And um, the very first one that manifested, she had Kundalini and it was very theatrical. And it did. It was there was no question in my mind that is not jibber jabber. It is a natural language that was coming out of her. Mm -hmm. um, it was unbelievable, you know. And uh, we ended up getting everything cast out of her. But um, it, it was just funny because that demon manifested in her in the United States. And she spoke a completely different language. Wow. And then over there, you had someone have a demon manifest. And they spoke English, even though they didn't know it. Yeah, that goes to show. Um, well, that actually makes that commandment of the Lord Jesus even more... Uh, amazing because he can send us to every single nation where whatever tongue they speak and we can cast out demons because all demons speak english yeah or a german for example you can cast them out in jail because they can speak every language yeah 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 they've been around forever they yeah. know yeah that is for sure um what do you find in doing deliverance ministry um is like how generally do people become possessed or demonized, whatever, however you want to call it? Yeah. Oh, uh, well, I mean, uh, I'll say from experience, uh, which is about 18 years now I've been doing this, um, the vast majority, fast, way over 50%, way over half is child abuse right. and rejection and mm -hmm. child rejection in childhood so mm -hmm. when they feel rejected by either or both parents sometimes even by by more than that mm -hmm. uh, it's a horrible thing and it brings right. about so much oppression after um and and any of any form of abuse especially sexual abuse yes um and then secondly would be uh hundred percent um, witchcraft attacks and it's it's like that Sunday up I mean I've I get I get more people now come that are under a witchcraft attack than ever before over the yeah. last several years already um, and not just people from an African origin um, but literally from any origin and it's right. like, Witchcraft is on the up and people are under attack and yes, and they can be set free and, and will be but it's it's um, There's those two I would say that are the, Definitely the, the big ones. Do you find a lot of times like in the abuse situations or any even, honestly even in the witchcraft situations that the person was kind of set up to end up in that in a in a predicament where something happened to them like that um due to generational curses as well um can, can you say that one more time sorry do, do you find like a lot of the people who are you know needing deliverance and have been put in a position where they were abused or maybe had witchcraft done against them or maybe both that uh sometimes the whole setup that put them in that situation started generationally like with someone in their ancestry oh yeah that yeah yeah, very, yeah i got your point yeah that, that definitely one of the one of the uh big entries yeah is yeah. what especially um i always tell those that are under a witchcraft attack i said uh, the witch or the warlock or the the the, the evildoer yeah it, it's using it's or he or she is seeing a door or an opening into your life to attack and it can be generational or there might be a soul tie yeah and often it's because the the witch or the evildoer develops a relationship 
which is a fake friendly relationship in order to attack or yeah, yeah or they use indeed a generational door yeah i i have seen where <coughs> if they can't find an area to just outright attack you they will do things uh to try to open you up where you know there's so much being done against you you start having unforgiveness or mm -hmm. anger because you're you know you're just getting messed with you know and things keep going wrong so you get very angry and you're you're being set up um i mean I, I think there's such a thing as righteous indignation but i think it can get really dangerous when um when it's it crosses the line and it's you know unforgiveness i experienced that myself uh before um and uh i, I had to really like step back and take a look and be like okay um i need to forgive this person you know and uh sometimes people don't want forgiven <laughs> you know but it's on our part we do what do what what is up to us you know um but how how do you know do you see like when people when somebody comes to you and say it's a witchcraft curse and um they're feeling they you know, they need some help what kind of things are they going through that lead them to believe you know there is something wrong and they do need help like is it different than you know the person who has demons because of abuse or something like that um do you know well, what i mean yeah is and i love the question because the majority of them and people might expect oh they're, they're going through all sorts of like really like monstrous scenes but actually um what the main um objective of those witchcraft attacks by those evil doing people uh satanic people are uh, is is to restrict the person so the people that are under these witchcraft attacks they cannot progress they cannot finish their education they cannot progress in work or career they cannot um, um, uh, get paperwork uh, uh, visas or uh, passports they literally everything is restricted and it's so frustrating for them that they are like captured they're completely imprisoned in the spirit and they're not they can't do anything they can't progress they can't live uh, a, 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 a free and blessed life right right I think one of the apart from them will having they will see in their dreams you know the the, the bad things uh, like the glimpse in the spirit realm of, of what's being done to them but in the natural they're just restricted yeah. and it's and after when they get set free and often it's family members it's it, 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 very close very close family members. they have to completely break off from them because when these people have um decided to serve darkness um it, it, lightness and darkness really cannot dwell together they just have to break free from i agree from i'll them. tell you i um i was dealing with a situation a few years ago and this individual I was like, people call, you can call me crazy if somebody I work with. And I told some of my other coworkers, I said, call me crazy, but I'm telling you, so-and-so is a warlock or a witch. It was a male. Mm -hmm. And um, in some forms of witchcraft, a witch is a witch, for, no matter if you're male or female. But I said, I know it. I know that he's one. And he hated my guts. This guy could not stand me. Mm -hmm. And um, it turned out. I ended up uncovering online just because I was being messed with so bad. I was like, you know, I'm going to prove this. He is into witchcraft. I ended up finding all this, all these websites he was on oh. using a witchcraft name. He has a different name as a witch and wow. he uses that name instead of his real name, but it had his picture with the other name. You know, he, he, he gathered, you know, he formed all these groups for Satanists and pagans and witches all together, all these things. And, um, I mean, it was messed up, you know, and, uh, it, it was funny because I call me crazy. I suspect that, there, that he had actually put a hit on me more than once. And in one particular incident, um, 
I had gone to a local store to get something and I came home and it was, it started raining while I was coming out of the store and um, I drove home. It was only a few minutes from my house. I got out at, in my driveway out at, right beside my front or my side door that I enter. You know, I always enter my house through my side door and I stepped up on the step and I heard bam, this noise that was so loud. Oh, and I thought a tree got struck by lightning. Mm. Now, keep in mind, my house is three stories. Several houses around mine are three stories. I have a massive oak tree in front of my house and right behind my house. You know, all this. And uh, I thought, man, something got struck by lightning. It was so loud. And um, I looked around. I couldn't see anything. And I mean, I went in the house, was sweeping, turned off my sweeper. And I'd actually go into the store to get sweeper bags. I turned off my sweeper and I heard sirens mm -hmm. and I went outside and there is flames pouring out the house beside me. The mm -hmm. house beside me is a ranch style, one story house. When the fire department finally got the fire put out, I mean, it was raging. It was big, nasty fire. You know, mm -hmm. when they got it put out, I went over and talked to them and I said, you know, I, I don't know if this is helpful but I think the house got struck by lightning and they said, um, why do you think that? And I told them what had happened. And if the, the uh, fire in investigator said, yeah, you're absolutely right. We already determined it was a lightning strike. Now here's the interesting part. It struck in about a three second window when I was getting out of had jumped out of my car and was hurrying up and trying to go in the side door about three seconds. It actually struck 15 or so feet from where I was standing. And lightning does not generally sp uh, strike at the low point in an area. It's going to strike that. My, my house would have been more likely to get struck. Those massive oak trees would have been likely to get struck. The neighbor's houses that are, you know, taller three-story houses. Um, and it just so happens this the smallest, uh, as far as height-wise, house on the block in the area got struck and, you know, call me crazy, but with all the things I was dealing with at that time out of this individual, I think that bolt was meant for me. It was meant to take me out using like the, the elements, the natural elements. And uh, I think, in my opinion, call me crazy, but I believe an angel intervened and blocked it and it hit that other house instead of me. And the interesting part was nobody got hurt in that house. Another neighbor saw the flames and ran over and got everybody out. Their pets were safe. The house was was salvaged. It was all repaired. You know, everything was okay. But um, another time, um, you know, when I was dealing with that individual, I have a music studio at my house and a building outside. And um, I went out, you know, in the summer, I run a dehumidifier in the studio. And in the winter, I run a humidifier. I want to keep the humidity, you know, fairly constant. And I walk in. Now, there's three locked doors you have to go through to get into this building. And the building is like triple walled. It, it's set up so I don't hear anything outside. You know, I don't want to re be recording music and hear the neighbor's lawnmower. And I don't want them to hear if I have an amplifier cranked, you know. But um, I go into my studio and there's a dead sparrow laying in the middle of the floor. And I'm like, that's impossible. It was dead. It, how did it get in here? You know. And um, I, I come to realize through a little bit of research that uh, Satanists will uh, lay a dead sparrow in your path. It's either like at the site, at the scene of a crime where they have done something or as a threat. <coughs> and um, I'm convinced, okay, that's that, that got in there through supernatural means. So there's no way it could have got in there otherwise, you know, but the, uh, I'm the only one with the keys. And you got to go through three locked steel doors to get in there, you know? So I get it. <laughs> you know, you can get cursed. All it takes is you're a Christian and somebody determines, you know, somebody that dabbles in the occult's pretty much automatically not going to like you. And, uh, you know, I dealt with a lot of stuff uh, like that, but um, that's why I ask you, you know, I, I, I feel, I feel like kind of what you were explaining is kind of like the person that's going through that just hits one wall after another, after another, you know? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. But thank God in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, 
there is freedom and people That's get right. can be set free. Um, I always tell everybody, uh, if you fear the Lord, if you walk upright with God, with a forgiving heart, you will be set free. Yes. Yes. Yeah. The angel of the Lord encamps about those who fear him, you know? Amen. Yeah. You know, and, um, so generally when someone comes to you and they need, they need deliverance, um, how do you determine like what, what methods do you go about to determine? Yes, this person does have a demon. And if you, if you need to identify who is this demon and why is it there? How, how do you go about doing your, the method of the actual deliverance? Um, yeah. Um, uh, I will, I, I basically, I'm, I pray to be Holy Spirit led. Yes. And then I take them, I take them into prayer. Mm -hmm. And as the Holy Spirit leads, um, I get them to, to repeat with me. Mm -hmm. and, and then we actually in agreement, ending up in, renouncing a whole set of different things that the holy mm -hmm. spirit just brings up yes um in order to strip the enemy of his armor to destroy the evil works that were put in uh, to break the curses mm -hmm. and, and then when it comes to commanding evil spirits to leave um some of them as you well know will speak and have something to say or to argue about mm -hmm. and then we'll find out their names uh, otherwise they just just leave yeah. because the the stronghold is pulled down the curse is broken they don't have anything else to hold on to um unless there is some like soul wounds that are not uh, healed and then they hold on to that yeah. and then and we'll need to pray about that um but that pretty much um and and i don't I normally allow them to speak too much um it's like a, a quick interrogation if they mm -hmm. do speak. yep and and let them know that G jesus is lord and the holy spirit is in charge here yes yes <laughs> and yeah, the they go yeah the more they talk the, the more likely they're going to start lying <laughs> hey, yeah yeah, lying. That's the one thing they all do. A lying spirit itself lies constantly, but they all do, you know. Um, are there, what are some of the demons you seem to run into more often, or, or like the most regularly, if, I, if that's a good way of saying it, like the most frequently, are there <laughs> certain ones you run into more often than others? Oh, yeah, definitely rejection. Okay. Rejection, the spirit of rejection that then causes that person to be rejected by technically everybody socially work-wise by their employers mm -hmm. by um church yeah. uh, family and just rejection of, uh, so rejection big one abuse mm -hmm. basically bring them in abusive situation after abusive in situation mm -hmm. um in fact that um the where the lord Jesus talks about the woman at the well and he said you've actually you've been married five times I think he said and the, and the one you're with is not your husband yeah rejections he gets rejected so he gets into another relationship set up to reject her again yeah and uh, so and then the third big one would be witchcraft okay uh witchcraft uh, Python or or Leviathan Leviathan yes mentioned in the Bible Yes. King of Pride and also um, comes in through witchcraft. That's a big, yes. big. Yes. And stubborn. How, how does the spirit of Python tend to manifest in a person's life that's dealing with that demon? Um, is, is, it, is it like a Python? Like it just keeps squeezing the life out of them? I mean yeah 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 in a way it does yeah it can be physically or indeed that in their natural life 
things just are strangled. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, but uh, I mean, physically they can, they, 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 they normally suffer quite, quite a bit physically because um, the body isn't functioning the way it should do. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a horrible thing, these evil ones. Yes. Um, and I, I would say on that note, what you said, I think, and I, I had this conversation with somebody yesterday, um, the worst, what I find, the worst, and we, we should be addressed this the soonest, is when they're in the mind. I mean, that's just very bad. Okay. And the sooner that gets addressed, the better by anybody who who knows somebody who has that or by the person themselves. Yeah. Once they're in the mind, it becomes very, very difficult. Is that is that like where they're going to be hearing more voices and different voices talking to them all the time or wh what how does that situation manifest as far as yeah that's when they'll start hearing voices and then that can, can get worse mm -hmm. then they interacting with it that yes. is even worse <laughs> then they start believing it and before you know they're isolated and they're just in their own world yeah with these uh invisible spirits yes busy in their own mind and it, it becomes um, very difficult to to reach them because they're they're completely shut off. It I ran into somebody with a situation like that, and it almost feels like you try to help, and they almost it's like they want help, but yet when you try to actually set the time up to help them, there's always something. Yeah, there's always and and, and it's like that. Kind of, I think that's all part of what's going on in their mind, you know. Yeah. Um, that they're, they're, they it just gets shut down and they can't do it for whatever reason and it just keeps going on and on and on. But um, I, I it's funny that you mentioned it the way you mentioned it because like as soon as you said that a, a, a particular case came to mind, and that is yeah that is that's a tough one for sure. Oh, very tough one. Um, and and I, I've it's again that's on the increase. Uh, Patrick, that, that's on the increase. Um, like self harm is on the increase, and and, and people hearing voices, um, and and a lot of people that I've ministered to that have these voices, um, uh, they came in through uh, drugs. A lot of it um, um, mm -hmm. by uh, long term smoking of weed. Yeah, um, and it messes with the mind. Yes, uh, but when you when they <clears throat> when they really want to get set free and they, uh, they, they these voices they they do become less and less and less and less until they're no longer bothering them. Yes, but it's something that people shouldn't wait too long because it's um, once one little voice is in, it can easily get worse. You know, the the, the one case I'm thinking of. From what I can tell, it um, this person played with a Ouija board and went to a psychic, and I believe there were some tarot cards involved, whatnot. And it's like, um, and this person did it with some friends, and according to what they're telling me, it doesn't seem like any of the friends really had a negative effect. Now, I I would tend to believe down the road they're going to because when you dabble in that stuff, you open up doors. Or your kids are going to because, you know, you're opening up doors that can affect them. But um, it seems like from what I'm able to tell, that's where this came in. It's, mm -hmm. it's kind of a strange one, you know, a strange situation. But um, the other thing, when you say like curses of rejection and a lot of the people dealing with rejection, where does that usually start? So it can start as early as the womb. Um, so when, when a mother uh, or or so say yeah. So so when the baby's in the womb and the mother doesn't want it, or the the, the, the father, the biological father, has already left. Mm -hmm. that's rejection right there. Yeah, that's rejection from the womb, and then the curse is the curse is on. Yeah. <laughs> And the enemy, you know, he just he's just going to enforce that curse and make sure 
there will be rejection until that curse is broken in Jesus' name. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, I, I've seen people that I believe were dealing with that. And I think sometimes they feel rejected when there isn't any intended rejection whatsoever. And I mean, I'm, I'm sure that's not always the case, but like they've probably been set up for so long that they perceive certain situations as rejection when they're really not like, you know, and, and so, but it just keeps feeding that, you know, what, what the curse or whatever it's, it's feeding the, the, the feelings they have uh, yeah. negatively, you know, and, and their attitude can also be rejective where they don't realize it, but yes. they be a bit of a rejector. If that's the correct word themselves. Yes. Uh, yeah, bless them. So the <laughs> deliverance. Yeah, absolutely. What would you say? Um, what would you say would be like the most extreme case you've ran into? Um, well, there's a, a several of them. Um, I think I, I would say one of the <laughs> most extreme one. I thank God I'm alive uh, because th th that was actually one of the moments that, that I think that, well, the possessed person definitely was going to kill me. Mm -hmm. um, I, it, I think I went about it slightly um, naive, as in not taking all the precautions I should have done, but thank the Lord of his grace, and he was with me. But I ministered to this person. This was a very small, uh, I like, uh, skinny woman, mm -hmm. uh, really, you'd say somebody without any strength, skinny, not, not tall, short, uh, think nothing of it in terms of this could be, a, a, a physically dangerous. Um, anyway, I minister, um, and I've never seen anything like it. The, the demon that manifested, Actually, there was, there was a kind of like a, fr a friendly dog in the room. The, the, the dog left, and I thought, okay, that's probably not a good sign. Yeah. Soon after, <laughs> the dog knew what was coming. Soon after, the, the demon that manifested, I've never seen anything like it. The, the, the whole atmosphere changed. Um, it came ice cold in the room. Um, this person w was mega strong. It, it were loud. It, it picked up like this, I mean, massive, like an, uh, an, a table, coffee table type with cast iron, super heavy, unliftable, yeah. lifted up like it was a box of cardboard wow. and about to smash that into me. Wow. And I, I, I obviously gotten a little bit frightened and i and i shouted from the from the top of my lungs as loud as i said jesus help and within sorry that's my that's okay um within <laughs> all i all i remember is is this woman getting smashed onto the floor um, by what I believe is the angels of the Lord. Yeah. Um, and she was knocked out cold. I, wow. I, I, when I, I, I took a moment to, to, um, to get over my own shock. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was really taken aback. And then when I was finally back to, you know, what I, a bit more normality, and I looked at it, and I thought she was dead. Yeah. I thought she was dead. Um, she was just knocked out completely. Um, wow. And I just prayed that, you know, she'd wake up. I know she wasn't dead, but she was unconscious. She mm -hmm. was not unconscious. Um, and I just prayed for her to be uh, back to normal. And uh, it took a while, and she, yeah. She woke back up, thank God. Mm -hmm. And uh, she, she, she said, and she knew nothing about it, nothing. 
Yeah. He was completely unaware of what happened. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, it's <laughs> she got set free, but in a more unusual way than others. So that, that was definitely one of the top moments there. Yeah, that was... Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, that is... Uh, yeah, and, and you know, t I, I feel like when the demon is up completely fully manifested, it's almost like the person is just a puppet and the demon's controlling it. And the person really doesn't know anything that's going on at that time. No. Now, generally when a demon comes up and starts talking to you and saying it doesn't want to leave or whatever, they're not fully up. They're up enough. They're, they're talking through that person, but the person's fully aware. They know what's going on. But like that situation, like you described, I I've seen that before. And, and, um, yeah, they had no idea what even happened. It was like they weren't even present when it happened. Yeah. And I, that's one thing, like, I, I ask people sometimes if I'm, if I'm, you know, going down a checklist, so to speak, and just trying to figure out, do they need deliverance or what, what's going on with them? One time, sometimes I'll ask, do you ever have time loss? Mm -hmm. And that's why I ask that, because there's times where um, the person yeah, I can't. It does seem like I was sitting there. And then the next thing I know, it was two hours later. I don't remember. I swore it was five minutes, but it was two hours later or something like that. And um, I believe in those situations, it is something else came up and manifested fully through them and was manifested for a significant amount of time. And that's why they don't remember it, you know? Yeah. But, yeah, that is that is really interesting, and it, the superhuman strength. I mean, Oof. that's that's definitely. But you know, you go back to uh, the, the demon, uh, the demon possessed man who had the legion, and um, you know he had superhuman strength. They had, people would bind him in chains, and yeah. he would break the chains. Absolutely spot on. Yeah, he would s smash it. Yeah. And, it, and it's funny with all of that. And he was known and people were scared to death of him, obviously. Yeah. And he was known for all that. And yet Jesus cast him out of him. Yeah. And, and, and uh, like basically like nothing, you know, and, um, and, and I do think there's, there's little tidbits when you read through the scriptures about things that are significant. That they were done for our benefit when he said, what's your name? That was for a reason. He knew what it, he knew in the name of every single demon in that guy, which was of thousands. Because the, and then the guy said, "My name is Legion, for we are many." He knew the name of everyone, but he did that to you know, to as as an example for us, you know, yeah. Uh, that you know sometimes you you're going to want to ask those things, you know, and and with the little boy that um, had the deaf and dumb spirit in Mark nine. You know, he asked his dad, how long is it, how long ago was it that it came on to him? And he said, um, since he was a child, you know, like there's a reason. Jesus knew the answers to those questions. He was doing that because those are things we might want to consider when we're trying to help somebody. You know, when did this start? You know, and, and if you're if, if something does manifest, who are you and how did you get in or whatever, you know? But again, you don't want to sit there and you know, if I've listened to the tapes of the the case that became the movie, The Exorcism of Emily Rose. Yeah. And uh, I, I'm, it's escaping me now that girl's real name. Um, but uh, the, the, the when you listen to the tapes, it's like those priests did everything you could possibly do wrong. And they were sitting there asking, oh, what do you think about this thing that the Pope's doing and all this and that? And they're asking all these questions that have nothing to do with anything mm -hmm. and the demons just eating it up. You can just tell by on the recording. So it's all recorded and the wow. demons just playing them like a fiddle. Mm -hmm. And then they start trying to cast it out and they're, they're, they're commanding it in the name of Mary in the name of Michael, the archangel. And it's like, no, it's Jesus. It's Jesus's name. That's the only name you use, yeah. you know, but uh, it, it's just amazing. If you don't follow scripture, you can really get yourself in a mess. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, 100%. Yeah. If it's not done 100% biblically, it's super dangerous. Now, with those, the, the you know, you were on the episode of Cursed Films. Um, 
okay, do you believe that there you can actually be involved in something like that? Say you're an actor or you're, you know, work on a set or whatever in something like that, because you're involved in it, you can come under a curse. Yeah, I think that's very possible. And I yes. think it happened. Um, and I think most people there agreed that something <laughs> is going on. Yeah. When it gets to these scary and horror, um, it's like there's summoning demons in some of them. Yeah. Uh, scripts, and even though they're acting, but I think the supernatural begins to act with them or act along with them. Yes. It gets really messy. Yeah. And you and know, it's so intensive. I mean, I don't watch it, mm -hmm. but probably why it's why the, the movies themselves are so demonically charged and can cause trouble for those viewing them. You know, I have found that I don't feel like Hollywood has any interest in telling the truthful version. I mean, you could tell a story in a movie about a real case and you could describe, you could totally open people's eyes to this is how possession happens. And this is how you go through a deliverance. And you could show you could show all the scary stuff that that person has gone through. Because let's be honest, you know, when you're dealing with your being possessed or having attachments, sometimes very scary things happen to you. You can share those things, but in the final, it's the, the final part of the movie, when you show that there's authority in Jesus' name, and and this can be dealt with, and this person can be delivered, and. Uh, the priest doesn't, or that, you know, and like in the exorcist, the priest has the demons come into him. Terrible idea. And then he commits suicide. You know, it's like, um, that's the whole point is like, they're not telling you the truth in that movie. They're actually glorifying the evil. And, yeah. you know, by, by, if, by, if they, if that movie ended, that they took authority in Jesus name and drove it out and the girl healed, maybe the movie wouldn't have been cursed, but that was never their intention. That was not their intention, no. Yeah. No, they wouldn't. That's why you have to be very skeptical of whatever comes out of out of that. I, I, I'm impressed that they actually let you know let you share on a regular TV show like that. Uh, I think it's awesome. But yeah. um, generally, Hollywood, you know, anything associated with Hollywood um, doesn't really want the full truth out there every once in a great while something slips through you know yeah yeah it, it does and and then you know i mean people can actually see that that is too difficult to act that is real that is a supernatural reaction that came out of those people that will be ministered to yes and um it you know, the Lord really wanted to demonstrate the reality of it. And, and, and I've seen it in a few other documentaries that I did. Um, and it's, it, it, I always say, well, when it reaches people to bring them closer to the reality, mm -hmm. that there is God, that there is the Lord Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. um, then it's worth it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Do you find like, um, you know, Hollywood does tend to overdo things, but do you find that sometimes in deliverance that the people really do have some very strange manifestations when those demons are up, like contorted faces, different voices, um, eyes change, you know, do you, do you find that sometimes those, those things do happen? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Not, not often, but when they do happen, it's, very strange and yeah. it i mean people completely and utterly I've, I've seen somebody this is one of those people from uh and uh with the indian ancestry mm -hmm. i mean this person would manifest and which the, the shape of the person would completely change as if completely different person as if a different weight wow <laughs> um and that gets very strange but um, um, like you said, the answer is in Jesus. Only. That's right. You know, I, there was one, since you're in the United Kingdom, I'll share this. There was one years ago 
there was a lady that I had, um, she listed, I used to do a, in those days, what was called a blog talk show. Mm. And, um, there was a lady that was lived in England and she would listen to the show and she told me some weird things happened. Like she would be listening and certain things I would say, just sharing truthful things about spiritual warfare and whatnot. She would start to get really angry or like, um, things in her house would like short out when she would get angry over things I said on the podcast, you know, or, or blog talk show at that time. And uh, so me and a, there was a, a deliver or a, a minister. He was a Methodist minister named Billy Vander Vanderbilt. And we said, well, you know, we can do a Skype call with you. And he lived in Arkansas. I'm in Ohio, you know, but we did like a, a, a Skype call with three people. And it was the weirdest thing. Like, there were times during the call and I asked him about this afterwards. I said, was this my imagination or was this like, you know, some weird digital thing or would, did you see this too? And what I would notice is it was like, there were times it was almost like you were talking to a different person than this lady. And it's, this is going to sound crazy. It almost seemed like there were times when you were talking to her and it was not her. It was somebody in a disguise trying to look like her, like her, 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 her appearance changed. It was one of the strangest things I've ever seen. And, and I'm not coming from, I mean, I've seen people with their eyes roll back in their head or a, a, a individual with their eyes roll back in their head. The whole time a particular demon was up, you were seeing nothing but the whites of the eyes. I've seen their, their hair color change, their skin completely go white. Every demon manifests, you know, when it's a different one comes up, you know, but um, so having seen those things already, see, seeing this where it was like, that was so strange. It was like there was somebody else there trying to masquerade as her. It was such a weird, uh, a weird situation. There was definitely something physically going on, you know. Ooh. Boy, that sounds very extreme indeed. Yeah, it. It, it definitely, it, it was. Um, and do you find like, okay, I'm going to ask you this too, since you are in the United Kingdom, are you familiar with um, the haunting of Epworth Rectory, which no. was uh, 1700s? It was John, Samuel Wesley, John and Charles Wesley's father. Mm. You know, those people had been almost, um, they had been almost killed repeatedly Sadly, because they believed it, they they did not believe in predestination and they had an Arminian point yeah. of view, but which was free will basically. Mm -hmm. But um, they had had their house burnt down. At one point, John Wesley almost died as a child because the house was lit on fire. He had to jump out a window, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, later, after John and Charles, I both I, I believe they had both left and gone on their studies or whatever they were doing to you know being ministers. And for around a month, a haunting um, began in the house and lasted for approximately a month. And, um, you know, it, it's a very interesting story. Uh, a lot of the activity is like, man, that sounds like something right out of a Hollywood movie. But yet it was written in the 1700s in, in the writing of the family members in uh, John Wesley's own journal. He went back later and interviewed the whole family about it. But um I didn't know if you had heard about that, but it's it's funny because at one point, right before it all stopped, uh, Samuel Wesley had brought in a deliverance, another minister who had actually done exorcism, if you want to call it that, had he had done deliverance ministry, and um, some of the some of these people, he other ministers that came to the house told him, you 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 need to just leave the house, and Samuel Wesley said, I shall never flee the devil; he shall flee from me. And you know what? The haunting stopped. All of the activity stopped. And it's like, yeah, that's a that's a cool attitude to have. You know, he was, and that's the thing. You know, being deliverance, and I'm, and I, and I say this about you, especially. You know, you've traveled all over the world into these other countries that are not in any way Christian nations, and uh, you've stared the devil in the face and said, "You're going to leave." You know, mm -hmm. and uh, that's not it's not for the timid. It's not for the fear, fearful, you know, that's brave. Yeah, that takes a lot of bravery because, um, and, and a lot of boldness because you're up against it and you're in unf unfamiliar and unfriendly territory, you know, when you're doing that. But then again, as I'm saying that, I'm thinking, and you're doing the Great Commission. 
because Jesus said, uh, go to the ends of the earth and preach the gospel to every creature. And then it says, you know, uh, those who believe will they'll cast out devils in his name. So yeah. you're, you're living out the great commission to the extent that going around the world doing it. Yeah. So that's awesome. Amen. Yeah. Oh, it is awesome. It is awesome. And, uh, and thank, thank God this gospel will be preached until the end. And then the Lord will come back. That's right. That's right. Um, how can people uh, get a hold of you and support your ministry, uh, support you, you know, with what you are doing? Because, I mean, let's be honest, it, it, it takes money to travel, to, 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 to minister. It absolutely does. And, you know, and it's, you know, the Bible is very clear. It's biblical uh, to give uh, un, unto the uh, ministers of the gospel and to, you know, further the gospel, the cause of the gospel. So yeah. how can people, uh, you know, support you? Um, yeah, they can help support and send, send me to these nations, um, through easiest is probably through the website okay. where we have a donation page. Um, and it's, um, it's born again, ministry.org, or there is a shortcut, um, evangelist, vincent.org evangelist, vincent dot org okay evangelist vincent dot org and um the and and the, the website is uh born again ministry dot org as well is that correct as well yeah the okay. both yes and, and i let i i want to encourage the listeners to support support his work um you know what when 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 you do that you're you're uh you're pouring y y your seed basically into uh, the, this, the, the soil of the gospel, basically that that's how people get saved, you know, uh, is, is through people going out and, and, and preaching and, and, and part and, and carrying out the great commission. And part of the great commission is, you know, heal the sick, you know, preach the gospel, heal the sick, cast out demons. It's that simple. And, uh, so I, I would like to encourage, encourage, the, the listeners and the viewers uh, to, to check out his website and support the work that he is doing again. And uh, is there anything you would like to share, um, you know, as we start wrapping up the program? Yeah. Well, I'm, when I'm out there um, and I love being out there, either India or Africa, um, I, I work with, the, uh, with, with a few local pastors mm -hmm. uh, and we'll, we'll make it happen. We'll, it's all outside in the open air. And after I've preached the gospel message and um, prayed for um, those that, 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 that want salvation mm -hmm. and that, that are pricked in their heart and yeah. come forward and are touched by the gospel and the message and the Holy Spirit, um, then I go into a bit of healing and then deliverance. And uh, that gets really intense. So we, I'd, I'd, I'd like to really do the full gospel when I go out there. It's very tiring um, because it, it's very intensive when there is a few thousand people out. And then you're going to do a bit of deliverance as well. Yes. Uh, people are getting healed. People are getting delivered. God truly confirms the word. He confirms the word with those signs and wonders. Yes, um, and it's and it's amazing. Uh, and and I just yeah, I'd just like to say that as an encouragement that um, the Lord is is with us. Yes, yeah, and it said that you know with the, when he sent out the apostles that that that, uh, that things were confirmed with signs following. You know, and what you're doing that's that's exactly what you're doing. Yeah. So I want to I want to thank you for uh, uh, I'm, I'm smiling because I know his children are probably coming in wanting to see their dad, you know. Yeah. And, uh, uh, I, I want to thank you for what you're doing, number one, and, and uh, for being bold and, and uh, you know, having the guts to go out and, and do and fulfill your calling. And uh, I want to thank you for coming on the program tonight, too, as well. You know, people need to understand this is still for today. It, this did not end with the apostles. This did not end with the at the end of the book of Acts or something like that. This is for today. 
And uh, I believe even more so as we are in the last days, the world gets more evil, you know, and so there is more deliverance that is uh, that is needed. So um, I want to thank you again for coming on and for uh, what you are doing. Amen. Very welcome. And God bless you. And I look forward to, uh, to stay in touch with you. Yeah, absolutely. And God bless you, too. And uh, to the listeners, I want to thank you for tuning in tonight. Again, I'd like to encourage you to check out uh, uh, Pastor Vincent's uh, websites, his Evangelist Vincent's websites, get in, in, and support the work that he is doing. And um, again, if, if uh, you know, if you like the content we're providing, be sure to subscribe and share this message uh, to others. OK, until next week, though, good night and God bless. Mm -hmm.